Hi everyone, welcome to this webinar. And today I'm your host, Francesco Diziot, and we will spend the next hour or so in order to find out what is data streaming processing, what is Apache Flink, and what we are doing at Hyben to enhance the developer experience of defining streaming data pipelines. I'm not alone today. I'm here with basically one of the masterminds behind the product, Philip Ionov, which is the director of streaming services at Ivan. Hi, Philip. How are you? Great. Thank you, Francesco, and thank you for having me. Really excited to be here. Okay. Um, let's start with a little bit of practicalities. This is a webinar, so we always suggest that you have a good connection with the Wi-Fi, or even better, if you can plug the cable in your computer in order to have the better experience on the listening side. You will be muted when you join the webinar as an attendee, but you can use both the chat and the questions to interact with us. We will also try to interact a little bit more by answering questions, uh, sorry, by asking some questions to you during the poll, during the webinar, in order to understand at which stage of the data journey you're in. We will record this webinar and we will share this with you once the webinar is finished within the next three days by email. So let's start a little bit with the agenda. What we will cover today is, first of all, trying to understand what is stream data processing and why it is important. Then we will go deep a little bit into Apache Flink and also understand how Flink compares to all the other technologies that are in the similar space. Then we will focus on what is Ivan for Apache Flink and why it's different from Apache Flink itself. We will dig into the supported feature, both in the product now, but also looking at something that will come in the future. And then we will also demonstrate the product live with a live demo. So without further delay, I want to start with this webinar and I want to ask Philip the first question, which yeah. is what is data stream processing and why is it important? Yeah, yeah that's a great question, which we get a lot, right? Uh, to start from the very top. And um, it's essentially real-time processing of data streams. And the key word here is streams. Data is continuously being streamed. And actually, this is also how life happens in real time, right? It's not like some snapshots and then you move from a moment to moment. Things just happen naturally, right? So why not data actually follow this same natural pattern? So why wait? That was the core premise of data streaming. Um, if we take, uh, for example, batch processing, you always lag. It's always usually late by definition. So um, I can give you an example. I come from a financial background and I always give um, a concrete uh, scenario with fraud detection. Uh, one of the core, uh, the bread and butter of any bank is actually f uh, risk management and fraud detection, right? So naturally this was firmly embedded into a batch processing um, when a credit card, for example, got a fraud or some kind of a flag was raised for a credit card, then usually the system took a whole day to batch all those flags and at the end of every day or at every shift, certain number of credit and debit cards were blocked because the batch process actually run its process. However, you know, in between the time a fraud is detected and the card is blocked, there is a window, right? which actually can, uh, you can sustain quite a lot of losses because you know, your card is not blocked. And in this case, you, know, you can lose a lot of money. So in this case, we transitioned to data streaming with the help of Apache Kafka and Apache Flink. And suddenly the flags which were coming in for a fraud event were immediately ingested, processed when they happened, right? And they immediately triggered a locking event to the debit card or the credit card, which means that people got immediate safeguard on their money, which immediately translated in way better real-time contextual rich 
customer experience. And this is just one of the many examples. So what really stream processing is about is this rich, natural, contextual customer experience, which the customer can experience your product in real time compared to, let's say, some delays or, you know, batch oriented. Yeah, and you know the banking use case is very fitting. Uh, I wouldn't like to know that my credit card was misused after two days. I want to probably know almost immediately. I believe you already touched on the next topic, which is one of the main topics of the webinar, and is what is Apache Flink? So this is my next question for you. Well, and um, yeah, this is also a, a question we get asked a lot, believe it or not, still years after Flink was conceived. So the Wikipedia answer, right, the Google answer here states that Flink is an open source distributed stream processing framework that allows you to basically process real time data streams with, and these are the key three things, low latency, high throughput and high fault tolerance. It supports also batch, by the way, processing as well as event-driven stream processing, the example which I just uh, touched upon, with support for also at the same time quite a lot of data sources and things, so a lot, a lot of integrations. But I want you to really remember low latency, high throughput, high fault tolerance. These are really, really key actually to the success as an upstream uh, of Apache Flink. Um, and actually, these are the same things which data streaming architectures and event-driven architectures are seeking to optimize and work with, right? These are the core problems which businesses are trying to actually um, work with. Low latency, high throughput. Um, and this is also um, something very, very uh, dear to me and very close to what I've been usually doing over the past years with streaming with Kafka. So they are actually best friends at the end of the day. I also mentioned it is fault tolerant, but at the same time, um, given that it's quite a vibrant upstream community, open source community, it also gives us the ability to solve a lot of headaches around integrations. It integrates with very wide range of storage and messaging systems. And of course, as I mentioned already, Kafka, right? Many people probably from the audience also know it from the streaming world, from the angle of Kafka. But what is really, really important to note is that it has way richer set of integration capabilities out of the box. I believe you touch on several interesting topics. Now, I believe it's good to start with the first poll. Um, we want to understand what the what is the audience journey in Apache Flink. So we would like to ask you how familiar you are with Apache Flink. We set up several different options from it's the first time that I hear of it, or if you have some sort of experience with Flink, or if you have been already using it in your day-to-day -day job. I believe Flink is growing as a trend and we see more and more adoption. I want to go back to one of the sentences that you said, Philip, regarding Flink, that mm -hmm. can work both in batch and streaming mode and can integrate with a lot of different technologies. Well, I believe this is a key bit about Flink because it allows you to basically decouple your data pipeline definition from the technology that hosts the data. So companies can evolve the technologies that are hosting the data, passing from example from a batch system based on a database to Apache Kafka, while the data pipeline definition remains the same in Apache Flink. So now I believe it's um, interesting to review the results, which says that most of the people actually only heard for the first time or recently about Apache Flink, and there is not a lot of people actually implementing or using it on a daily level. I believe this is more or less, uh, Philip, in line with what we see in the market. There is a great adoption of the tool, but it's still kind of the frontier of the technology. What do you think? Yeah, exactly. Actually, this is uh, perfectly aligning with uh, my observation that everybody talks, everybody reads, but at the same time, the market is still maturing and it's in, in its, let's say, beginning to see how uh, real-time processing can actually help uh, 
propel further those uh, real-time use cases. Okay, I believe you again touch on another interesting topic because we are talking about data stream processing. But data stream processing is not a completely new topic. There are other technologies which enable the same kind of transformations on top of stream of data. So my next question is, before asking to you, I want to ask to again the attendees, if you are doing stream data processing, which technologies are you using? And we have a set of options going from Kafka Streams, some sort of custom scripts, Apache Spark or KSQL DB. So there should be a new poll popping up now. And I believe allows as well as you to understand where you are and which tools you're using in your data streaming journey. In the meantime, I want to ask to Philippe, why Apache Flink is different, how it compares to other streaming technologies. Yeah, that's my opinion, right? That's my full disclosure as well, but um, yeah, I'll give it a try. So with Flink, everything is just bigger and more powerful. Let's remember that Flink is a dedicated distributed stream processing framework, very similar to what actually Kafka is a distributed stream, a streaming service at the core, right? With built-in fault tolerances. So with this, we have several extremely important advantages over, for example, I usually use Kafka Streams as the benchmark, especially in the data streaming um, space um, to, to compare with. Number one, it's about flexibility. You already mentioned that you can completely decouple your pipelines from um, whatever processes they're actually running there. And this is very true. So it has both batch and streaming capabilities built in the sheer variety of processes and processing loads on a given cluster can be much greater which means that you not you're not necessarily stuck with kafka you can integrate with whatever is actually your landscape and this gives um, much greater flexibility number two of uh, let's say of the buzzwords is the scalability piece flink is out of the box able to scale horizontally as you workloads grow also has fault tolerance, as I already mentioned, built in because you know we have distributed system, which means that you can start small and then grow it to um, the size which actually fits your organization and your goals in terms of production scale. Um, I already mentioned the, the variety of integrations. So we have not only integration with Kafka, which is the bread and butter of Kafka streams because it's part of the ecosystem for our data streaming, we are talking about a wide array of data stores and message tools, which are, as I already mentioned, not necessarily to be data streaming to begin with, right? So this greater flexibility, scalability, and integrations are really feeding into the power of Flink, on top of which we also have quite a lot of powerful APIs and libraries. We have the, the SQL um, API, which we're using for our product today for Ivan for Apache Kafka, but we also have the stream API. You're able to define, uh, the, to use user defined functions, right? Which are way more custom, way more, um, let's say, tailored to your use case to begin with. Okay, um, I believe it's very interesting, uh, both to your reply about the options yeah. that Apache Flink gives and also the set of uh, replies that we had from the quick poll that says that a lot of people are using kafka streams some of them are using custom scripts but i believe almost the majority 48 percent of the attendees are not performing stream processing at the moment so i believe it's interesting to see that there is probably a growing demand of stream processing in the future Going to the uh, more Ivan related topics, you already touched a little bit that we provide something with Ivan for Apache Flink, but what is really Ivan for Apache Flink and how is it different from the standard Apache Flink itself? Well, I'll start from the top. It's the first um, in the world multi-cloud managed Flink. So we are present in pretty much any major cloud and in any major region for that matter. 
Uh, and what we have actually tried to do outside of the uh, marketing is really we have tried to combine the best of both worlds. Um, we know, you all know that Ivan is open source first company, not open core, but open source. So what we are working with is the vanilla software, right? Whatever you can actually get from the internet is what we also use. And then we build around it to make sure that um, we can make it as graceful as possible in your cloud of choice. So in that case, we get the upstream fling version and equip it to perform as a managed service, bringing on top of it the Ivan goodies, as I always like to say. Again, I'll just repeat them just to make sure that um, I, I list them. It's multi-cloud, it's fully managed experience, really, really important. Basically, Ivan takes care of everything for you, so zero ops. Automated backups and monitoring, so it's already built into the system. Uh, we will be providing, and we already have a number of integrations which we can touch upon later, but we will have ever-growing managed integrations uh, while delivering you a human support and best-in-class SLA. And actually, this is the my favorite part, right? When you're using such complicated uh, uh, products, it's really useful to have somebody on the other line to help you out, get you unstuck, and move on. And all this is packaged in our best-in-class 99.9% .9 for nines uh, SLA for guarantees. So, but this is not all, right? I, many, I, I mentioned best of both worlds. This is the Ivan world, right? We have a fully managed service for you. You can use it. It's out of the box, out of magic. It's fully self-driving. And then you can just focus on your business case. But we also are giving back to the Flink community itself. We have a lot of committers already working with us as part of our open source office. And uh, basically, our interest as a business or as a company are fully aligned with the interest of, of uh, the Apache Flink project itself, because we are usually trying to give back as much as possible of the work which, and knowledge which we have towards the upstream project. And this usually results in a faster and more feature and a greater set of features of the upstream project and gives also the most important thing, which is guarantees that uh, we will con continue to be open source first. And this is the Ivan promise. I believe you touch on uh, uh, some some sort of great points. Uh, the contributing back to the community, um, as we will see later, probably. Uh, I believe we developed some sort of link connector for um, Slack that could be used for notification. But we are working together with the Flink community to advance Flink as a whole. My next question for you is, you touch a little bit on the Flink service overall. I want to go to the details of it because I believe a lot of developers will be interested in the details. Yeah. So I want to know what people can expect in the tool now. So what are the goodies? What is this sort of enhanced developer experience that we are trying to build around Flink? Yeah, sure. So. I'll start with the most obvious thing. We have delivered SQL-centric developer experience for our Flink product. Um, as we already discussed earlier, there are a number of APIs which Flink provides uh, to actually work with it. Uh, we have chosen SQL as our first step in the journey. I will discuss later that there will be subsequent steps, but we do feel that given data <clears throat> processing is I wouldn't say it in its infancy, but definitely it's trying to reach out more people. We also aimed at making Flink as accessible and self-driving as possible to begin with. So we, we, it was a no-brainer for us almost to actually go for Flink SQL as a first uh, type of experience. What we actually mean by this is that we are using the SQL capabilities to provide to a widest possible um, audience the capabilities of a production grade Flink, but at the same time with the simplicity and elegance of SQL. Now, the second point here is really, really also interesting. We, we are Ivan, right? And we are not a Flink company, we are not a Kafka company, but we are actually a data infrastructure and a data company to begin with. And we have already provided with our uh, announcement native integrations with our other tools, which we think play very nicely with Flink to begin with. So you will have a native integration for Apache Kafka, you will have for Postgres SQL, the natural friend, also OpenSearch. And as you already mentioned, we added Slack just 
to showcase an end-to-end -end case where, for example, some alerts can end up in a third-party tool. But this will be one of our focus areas, which we'll, I will touch upon later in terms of um, what, what's next. Um, also, this is coupled with the um, let's say standard features, which are pre-built integrations uh, with your favorite logs and metrics endpoints so that you can build anything uh, on your side as a client uh, if you want to monitor or follow up on some specifics uh, for your service. Okay, um, a little bit more about the journey because I believe there are some goodies there as well. Yeah, um, actually that's my favorite part. Uh, we we now actually we, we have taken it a step further right this sql centric experience it does not stop at the sql right we actually took a lot of experience from our beta um, testing um, fyi we had um, flink in beta for some time and we were testing intensively with our clients to figure out what works what doesn't work so that we actually came back to the drawing board and we cooked up some new experience as i am um, as we, we like to say. So we have introduced the application concept. What this uh, application concept is, it's an abstraction that puts together Flink jobs with the source and sync, sync table definitions and gives you the ability to define the SQL, right, transformation, the SQL transformation, as well as any deployment parameters. Uh, basically, the effect of this is that we have tried to provide developers the ability to really create, create micro-streaming apps directly on top of Flink in a very self-service and streamlined way. By the way, this is the first time we do this at Ivan to begin with, right? And we're really happy to build a product with self-service and guard railing first built into the product. And uh, we're really happy what, with the results and we are really looking forward to what people will build. Now, there are other things as well. Um, what is an application without a version control, right? So we have also added a version control to your applications. And then you have a production grade pathway and full control of uh, what's going on with your version. We just felt that it's only natural if we are talking about applications to have versions. Um, something which is really, really cool and um, we were initially joking about, but then it turned into a complete feature and now we're extremely like fancy about it. Um, we are out added a preview feature on your SQL transforms, which basically instantly gives you preview of the expected output. And I believe Francesco later in the, in the demo, you will touch upon more on it. But I just felt compelled to, to mention this because uh, it was really, really a small but really powerful addition. And uh, yeah, as I already mentioned, Flink is at the heart of Ivan, right? So we have all the different integrations. There will be more, right? And um, we, we are seeking just to expand this beyond Kafka. Yes, Kafka will be and continue to be, uh, let's say, the mainstay of Flink, but we do see the potential of the technology to unify much more data stores, which we provide uh, natively. And last but not least, of course, it's the lifecycle management for those applications. Um, you know that Flink also has capabilities for checkpoints and save points, and we basically took them, we enhanced them to make them self-driving and automatic so that you shouldn't worry about losing your uh, data and definitions, which we believe that it's really important as well, especially in the these brittle moments of design time versus runtime. I believe, again, these are great features, basically taking out from the developer uh, the need of basically storing the code somewhere or doing their own versioning elsewhere and giving the ability to them to do that directly in the Ivan console. The data preview, we discussed this a number of times. I believe it's my favorite feature, and uh, I'm really happy that uh, we have in the, the product. A SQL autocomplete, again, to me, helps a lot, specifically if you are at the beginning of your Flink journey, because it allows you to understand which fields you may need or which fields are required post a certain definition. Now, we touch everything that is in the product at the moment, but I believe the one of the questions that the attendees could have is, what is coming next? What good is do we have in our roadmap? So yes, can you expand a little bit on that? Yes, of course. Um, that's the, you know, people used to ask me, what is Flink? 
and uh, you know how it works and you know what are the benefits and much more recently i get this question asked the most like okay what's next right so i moved uh, on the other side um i'll start with the most obvious one um from our discovery calls right and from our understanding of the current landscape of the market uh, we are extending our portfolio of plans and options why well we do see the need that we want to provide you an upgrade path right currently we are providing you with relatively comprehensive but re relatively small ish clusters to begin with and we are shortly adding a bigger ones when i say bigger versus small i'm talking about let's say thousands of jobs running um and you know like in the con in the context of a data mesh architecture or something really really let's say enterprise grade so this is for sure coming on a short notice we want to make sure that we can guarantee you a full scalability from the tiny tiny cluster which you're just trialing to let's say a 21 node cluster which is a production grade um, fully uh, with all the full goodies like fault tolerance etc the second obvious thing which we are working on already is more integrations uh, we are talking with our customers on a daily basis and this keeps popping up in our conversation and discovery we are talking about cdc connectors most of the time as well as downstream connectivity to data lakes we feel that one of the most prominent use cases is that there is some transformation happening with fling maybe with the help of transport of kafka but then eventually the data ends up in some sort of a data lake and we have seen uh, usually use cases popping around BigQuery and Delta Lake. So these are the two things which are on our table. Of course, Carapaz Schema Registry integrations are also part of the game. It's about formatting, making sure that we can support you throughout your journey. Um, and some stuff which is a bit, let's say, um, bigger in terms of a project size or a feature size. Uh, we are talking about low-level Apache Flink APIs, which for example, is adding the capability for the stream API to be part of our offering, which means that you will be able to use the user defined functions and the customer jars. This is something which is um, making its way in our backlog more and more, and we are looking at it more and more seriously. Also, RocksDB is another um, thing which is very much on our radar to increase uh, the capabilities um, for state, right? And of course, a lot of uh, small improvements in the UX, which will uh, help uh, just the user experience more. So we have actually our hands full for years to come, uh, but this is not to say that we're limited, but rather we are completely open and we are trying to gather as much as, more, as possible feedback from the market to figure out what is the next valuable step as well. Well, I believe that there are a lot of interesting uh, points here. Uh, I I really like the uh, personally the Postgres CDC connector, the, a way to do change data capture directly from databases instead of having to move the data to somewhere else. Directly being able to move from batch to streaming from a database. Um, I want to ask the audience now with another poll: Which of these features do you find interesting? or if none of the features that are listed here are interesting for you, well, you can make me click other and suggest another feature that for you, it, it's a game changer for Apache Flink. As we said, there are new plans and options, the CDC connector, Carapace, low-level APIs for Apache Flink, or the other option to list a little bit of uh, new features that you are expecting or you would like to land in the product. If you click other, please use the chat in order to tell us which features you would like to, to see next in the product itself. I believe this was the last question from my side, but now it will be interesting to um, provide a demo of the product itself. But before that, let's have a quick look at the poll maybe, at the poll result. And I believe, uh, I would expect, I don't know about you, Philip, but I would expect the, that the low-level uh, Flink APIs would be quite a good hit, 38%. Um, it's interesting for me that the Carapace schema registry integration is also really high uh, as preference, yep. because I believe 
it shows a, showcases a need of you know integrating and doing an extra step where doing this kind of integration when defining how Flink sees the data coming from other sources. So what do you think? Should we start with a demo of Ivan for Apache Flink? Yeah. Let's okay. Do it. So let's start with the Ivan console. We are into our, our console, which has a couple of services. What we see here is a pre-created Kafka environment. Kafka is a data streaming platform, as Philip said before. It will basically host our data. And then we will add Flink on top to do SQL transformations. Let me quickly showcase how you can create a service with the Ivan console. You can click on Create Service. You select one of the open source tools that we provide, including at the bottom, Apache Flink. Once you selected Apache Flink, you can select one of the major cloud providers. And within the cloud provider, you have the complete choice of all the regions where you want to create your instance. If you scroll a little bit further down, the service plan is what drives the kind of service size. It drives the amount of nodes in the cluster and the size of the cluster. So you can go from a business four, which is at the moment the minimum plan, to bigger either business or premium plans which offer bigger machines, bigger nodes in your cluster, depending on your needs. Finally, you have to provide the service a name. You click on Create Service, and within a couple of minutes, you have the Flink service up and running. So now we are go back to the project itself. Let's create a use case. You were talking about banking earlier on, Philip, what I tried to recreate here is actually something a little bit different. It's something that has to do with IoT sensors. And in this case is a set of, I believe, uh, readings from a set of IoT devices that provide us the host name, the CPU, the usage percentage of that CPU together with the timestamp in Unix time. This is a fake data generator that generates this data. Where is this data landing? If we go back to the Ivan console, we have our demo Kafka service and we can browse the topic, the topics of the service and we can see that there is a topic called CPU load starts real. If we go into the topic, we browse the messages, we can fetch the messages, and we are reading from the topic that we defined before. If we decode from base 64, we can see that we have exactly the same information. So we are pushing the data into a Kafka topic. So this is the incoming stream of data. Now, what we want to do is, for example, we want to filter only the sensor readings which have an usage over 80 percent because maybe we know that there is some problem with those sensor readings maybe because we know that that represents an anomaly and we want to send only those kind of sensor readings to another process so let's try to do that we go into our blink service and the first thing that we need to do is as philip said we need to create an integration. Integration is one of the beautiful things about Apache Flink because it allows you to either source the data or sync the data to another technology. But believe me, it's also one of the most complex things to do in Flink because you need to be aware of uh, endpoints, of SSL, of certificates, of authentication. What we do is we streamline this process. So, in our example, you can just click on get started. And with a couple of clicks, you define that you want to integrate the Kafka service that hosts our streaming data with the Flink service. You select the demo Kafka service and you click on integrate. The integration is done. It's all we need to start playing with the data. The next phase though, is to create an application. As Philip said, the application contains all the logic of 
our data streaming solution. So we create a new application and we give the application a name. Let's call it filtering. We click on create application. And now, again, a new idea that comes with Ivan for Apache Flink is we create the first version of our application. So now we are within an application, within a first version. You can imagine this being more or less the same as, you know, a repository in a GitHub that allows you to define a current version. And then the more changes you do, the more versions you create about your code. Now, to create a streaming data pipeline, what we need to say, what we need to define is a source of data, a sync of data, and some sort of transformation in the middle. So let's start by defining the source of the data. I select my integration with Apache Kafka to tell to Flink that my data is in some sort of Kafka instance. And then this is the SQL editor where I can start writing, create table. And what I'm showcasing here is the SQL autocomplete. Basically Flink suggests me where I should take the data from. It could be a data gen, which is a fake data generator. It could be a JDBC in case I want to take the data from a database. In this case, I want to use Kafka. As you can see here, the autocomplete allows me to basically have a minimal set of working parameters that I can start to manipulate. I could add manually all the required fields or like a good Italian chef, I'm coding, copy and pasting uh, something that I pre-cooked for you. What you can see here in the SQL statement is that I, create, I will create a table called CPU in, which has the host name, the CPU, the usage, and the query that fields that we saw originally in the data set. On top of it, what I'm doing is I'm translating the occurred that field into a timestamp that Flink understands and applying a watermark to say that I'm expecting all my sensor readings to arrive within 10 seconds of delay. This is a really useful method to allow uh, a late arrival of events and still be able to calculate correct results. The following section allows me to define where do I take the data from. I take the data from Kafka. Check this parameter. It's properties bootstrap servers. Basically here in the standalone Apache Flink is the way that you have to say, look that my Kafka is here and uh, I have three nodes and you want to connect to those. And then you have a huge list of additional parameters that you need to set in order to set up the SSL connection and maybe username and password, depending on your authentication method. With Ivan for Apache Flink, you don't need to do that because we will use the information from the integration to fill all the details for you. What you need to say, however, is which topic you want to take the data from. And this is the same CPU load stats real. The value format is JSON, and you want to start parsing from the beginning of the topic with this earliest offset parameter. At this point of time, what you can do also is you can check that your table definition matches the underlying data. So as Philip was saying, you can run the data preview and you can see, like in this case, that our table definition exactly matches the hostname, CPU, usage, or dot, and the new column time LTZ that we generated with our SQL. So we can now add the table to our flow. We define the source of information. We need to define the sync of information now. So we can click on add your first sync table. And again, you can use the, um, the SQL editor, uh, the SQL editor, yes, here. You select the integration to demo Kafka. And I copy pasted a similar SQL definition for my, for my target table. I am calling it CPU out filter. And it has a subset of the, the fields that we define in the source table. The connection is always to Kafka, leaving black the information about the service. 
The target topic is CPU load stats real filter, and the value is JSON. I can now add the sync table. And finally, the last step in the journey is to say what type of transformations I want to apply to the data. And again, this view allows you to browse the schema of the source and sync table and allows you to write what is your transformation SQL. In my case, I will insert in my CPU out filter table. I select a subset of the fields and I apply a work condition to filter only the records having usage above 80%. Again, in this statement step, I have the run option to check that my SQL transformation is actually doing whatever it is aimed to do. And as we can see, we see only records above 80%. Now it's time to save my application definition. And once I save it, the application is stored, but it's not running. What we need to do to have a running code is to deploy the application. So we can create a deployment. We can pick the version. In here, I have only one version. But in the future, if I edit my source table, my SQL transformation, or my target table, I will be able to select it from different versions. The second option allows me to start from a save point. For example, if I have a, an application running since a month, I can stop the application, generate the save point. The next time I start the application, either with the same version or a new version, Link will try to reuse the save point that I just created, allowing me not to restart from one month ago, but start processing from now all the new records. I can also set the parallelism if I want to achieve, uh, to have multiple workers sharing the load for the same task. So let me now deploy the application. This will be sent to Ivan for Apache Flink. The job will start initializing, and now it's already running. So my data filtering pipeline should be there working for me. Let's check it out, the end result. The end result is that we are pushing back the data to Apache Kafka. So let's go back to Apache Kafka. And in the topics, we see the original topic and the filter topic that we just created with Ivan for Apache Flink. So let's go into the target topic. If we now fetch the messages, we should see only messages with usage above 80%. If we check the first one, 81, 98, 95, and 92. So basically, our filtering data pipeline works as expected. And as you could see, we make we made usage of the SQL autocomplete, the versioning, the application, and the data preview, all features that enable a way better developer experience. So going back to our webinar, we went through the demo. And I have a good news for you because the demo that I've been showing you now is actually something that you can do yourself. Just, I believe yesterday, we published a tutorial in the IBM website. You can find the URL at the bottom or if you scan the QR code that should send you to the same page. Basically, the tutorial allows you to perform the same steps or do something even more complex, which is building an anomaly detection that applies also windowing and integrates not only data coming from Kafka, but also data coming from Postgres. And the good thing is, as Philip said, we have also a way in the tutorial to showcase how you can create notifications that are going through Slack. So a nice addition to the Flink ecosystem. I have, I believe now we have a little bit of time for Q&A. So I would like to see if we have some questions from the audience about what we said. And I believe we had one questions already coming in, 
in our webinar. And the first question that I want to ask you, Philip, is I believe uh, the question was, can we push data to your Flink service from any Kafka topic that we run on premises? Mm, uh, that's a tough one. So unfortunately, no, not right now. First of all, why? Because we as Ivan, we are cloud only company, right? So we do not run on your premise to begin with. However, uh, this does not mean that it will stay forever. Um, as part of the upcoming features, which are already um, discussed, we are uh, working already on integrating third-party Kafkas, right? We want to give you the capability to connect from the outside. Now, um, of course, I would again argue against uh, connectivity between uh, on-premise and uh, you know cloud-based product uh, for such types of workloads, but um, for example, if you're running in the same region, uh, but you're just self-managing a Kafka, definitely, why not? So that would be my um, short answer. Well, I believe that makes a lot of sense. The Another question that we got is, um, if I'm already using Kafka streams, why should, you, why should I move to uh, Flink or and Flink SQL? Mm -hmm. Um, good point. So first of all, let's let's really get things straight. Kafka Streams is great, especially when you're starting with streaming. It's out of the box. It's a lightweight library, right? It can just hook up to your application, turn it into a streaming app, and you can just happily, you know, stream after. Up until a moment. And when this moment usually happens, well, it's usually down the road when your streaming use cases are growing in numbers, but also in volume. What we are observing with our customers, which are running Kafka streams, whether it's on premise or uh, you know some kind of a hybrid, uh, we see that many use cases are beginning, as I like to call them, graduating. They started small with Kafka streams. It grew and grew and grew, and at some point, it's already affecting the very thing which makes it uh, super nice, Kafka itself, right? So a certain level of decoupling and I call it like, what is the next step? How do we graduate our data processing models into something which is battle tested and decoupled, as I already mentioned in the beginning, right? These are really the capabilities of Fling which um, uh, provide the baseline. So it's basically the next thing. So you can very easily start with Kafka streams and if your workloads are growing and the demand to the and criticality of those workloads is also growing, it may very well be a graduation type of setup and a migration between, uh, you know, like between uh, streams and uh, Flink. I believe this is a good uh, start from the next question, which I believe you touched br briefly before. Uh, will you be supporting custom jars uh, and support for the data stream API and the product moving forward? Short answer is yes. The question is about um, when. Uh, we are currently working on this uh, behind the scenes. Uh, it's one of the things which is really, really important for us. We do see the need for customization and adaptation to the data landscape our customers have especially prominent uh, demand is from larger companies which want to make sure that they can bring in their uh, let's say um, custom setups to us right uh, i'll give you a, again an example with with the bank i used to work with right i highly doubt that they will recreate their um, fraud model right in sql most likely it will be a jar file right because it's their bread and butter um, so we see this correlation between seriousness and criticality of workloads versus the skew towards, uh, let's say, custom jars versus uh, SQL. This is not to say that you cannot do it, but probably it's more practical and, your, and their team setup is usually towards Java developers. So, yeah. Okay. Um, a follow-up for this question is, are you planning to support PyFlink in the future? Huh. The PyFlink is a bit of a tough one. I don't think that uh, PyFlink is still ready and rich enough to be used in production, but that's my personal opinion. Many, uh, let's say, uh, developers have another one, right? Definitely a very high interest internally for us because 
Um, Ivan is a Flink, uh, sorry, is a uh, Python shop to begin with. So we have a bunch of uh, Python developers internally. Um, but for now, it's in the state of figuring out whether this is um, something we want to build support for or you know keep it at the back burner. Okay. Uh, I believe we see quite a lot of other questions. There is a question about can you demo Postgres plus streaming unified queries? Uh, I believe, uh, Henrik, you will find an example of this in the tutorial, and we are planning to push more content regarding uh, this kind of topic about cross-joining data uh, from different platforms. Um, can you expand a little bit on your schema registry integration about, uh, we are talking about Carapace? Uh, Philip, I believe one minute on this. I, I, I believe it could be an argument for like 45 minutes. If we can, if you can tell us that in one minute, that will be really good. Um, well, first of all, we already have, as of last Friday, by the way, uh, our, uh, our Confluent. So we already have this integration built in because this was one of the things which we noticed that many people needed in their workflows. Um, in terms of our own schema registry, we will probably follow the same path, right? One of the tricks here is for protobuf. We really need to dig into more and figure out what, um, let's say, the design should look like. But overall, we are talking about Avro and protobuf, uh, making sure that these are supported as quickly as possible. I hope that I answered this quick, you know, in under 30 seconds. <laughs> yep. Um, I believe the last question that i believe we can take and then we will come back to all of you with uh all uh, with an answer to all your questions later on after the webinar if we didn't manage to cover them now uh is how is flink behaving from a latency perspective compared with kafka streams maybe i can give my opinion but francesco you're way more technical you can also give your um i would uh say that it always depends <laughs> to begin with right it really depends on um where kafka is uh, kafka streams is actually running uh, same goes for flink uh the closer to the metal you are the better the latency is always you know these are distributed systems networking is extremely extremely big part how committed the resources and the virtual machines uh, you know you install the software is also really important piece um, a general rule of thumb is that the closer the producers and consumers, or in this case, sources and sinks, right, the better they perform in terms of latency. But uh, that's my observation. And overall, what I can say in terms of compare and contrast, right, between the two, um, if Blink cluster is sized correctly to the jobs it needs to handle, it's um, especially at harder or let's say going into the 80% of load, it performs way, way better than high load Kafka streams. So usually differences are seen at the edge where the machine just performs. Um, I usually like to compare these in terms of latencies and performances. One is being a scalpel and the other one is a hammer. You just need them for different purposes. And in this case, um, if you really have heavy workloads and heavy duty workloads, usually the, the tool of choice should be Flink. But Francesco, maybe you have a different opinion on this. Well, I believe you touch all the, all the good parts. I believe uh, latency is, is an absolute number, but it depends by requirements. And as you said, the, the closer you have your processing engine to where the data sits, the better latency, like the, the minimal latency figures you will have. I believe this concludes the um, Q&A part. As I said before, we will come back to you with all the other questions that we didn't manage to reply during the live session. I want to now, before thanking Philippe for uh, the time, I want to invite you, if you are happy with what you saw until now, we are doing another webinar in a couple of weeks, in 14 days. It's the 15th of March. And in that case, we will have on stage one of our customers. And we will learn from uh, Simply Learn how basically they, uh, they enabled scaling by the coupling systems. 
it's a good journey. It's an interesting journey. It's an interesting take on and experience on open source data platforms at scale. So I su strongly suggest you to um, check the QR code and to subscribe to the following webinar. One last thing that I wanted to share is that what if you just wanted to get started with Ivan? We share the uh, link to the tutorial. You can always can scan the QR code and go to the uh, sign up page where you will be able to start the free 30 day trial. Together with free 30 day, you get also 300 of credits that you can spend not only on you know, building one or testing one service, but you can plug and play all the different services as you wish and test the full power of the Ivan platform. With this, I believe we reached the end of the webinar. I want to thank a lot, Philip, for all the news and all the opinions that he shared with us. So thank you, Philip. And I hope to see you soon in the next webinar. I hope you enjoyed what you learned today. Thanks and bye from Francesco. Thank you. Thank you for having me again.